all this time, I didn't realize I was going to have to be atting him 16 times a day, telling him when it was starting. I thought, you know, given he was so sure, yeah, there he is. And here we are. Oh, so how are you doing today? What? How are you doing today? Um, doing good. Average. So the, uh, do you want the opening statement or do you want me to take it? Um, no, I'll let you start if you want. Sure, I think um, if you're going to be consistent in the belief that um, liberty is the highest value and that uh, you should never be aggressive to anyone, then the state is absolutely abhorrent in what I understand the state to be. Um, and I would just like to ask you, what exactly is holding you back from anarchy? Why are you currently still wanting the state to do some things? Mm -hmm. All right. First of all, I would like to say that um, we probably agree on a lot of things. And it's a very awkward position for me to actually defend the state because I'm usually the one uh, criticizing it um, as I usually uh, debate people with more um, <clears throat> left-wing positions than mine. Um, so what is holding me and what is holding me back from accepting full anarchy is that I want the libertarian movement to um, actually take place in the real world, not only in the um, world of uh, can someone mute, mute the mic? Okay. No problem. Um, What's holding me back is um, I want the Libertarian movement to actually take place in the real world. And I think that a lot of the attitude that anarcho-capitalists have um, towards uh, people who would define themselves as libertarian um, is actually pushing away people from libertarianism rather than, um, than actually attracting them. Because if you keep bashing on other libertarians on how much they are not li or true libertarians, um, that's I don't think that's a long. Um, I don't think that's that's gonna provide uh, a stable uh, growth for uh, libertarianism uh, among the general population um, in the long term. And so, since I believe that anarcho-capitalism is a utopia. Uh, I think that as a, as a society, we should strive towards it, um, already knowing that we will never be uh, capable of fully implementing it. And the thing, the the, the closest thing to anarcho-capitalism that I think can actually take place in reality is uh, minarchism. I regard minarchism as the closest stuff that we have to anarcho-capitalism and something that we can actually um, create in the real world and uh, not uh, some u utopia as anarcho-capitalism. Okay, so um, to address the first part of that um, where it pushes people away, I think that's more of a criticism of praxis rather than of uh, ideology. You know, that's just saying don't be a big meanie guy because then people will cry and they won't want to agree with you. That's a criticism of praxis, not of ideology. And to the second part, that it's uh, utopian. I would ask you specifically what parts of uh, the economy do you think monopoly is better at providing than competing firms? You still there? All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yeah, I would argue that um, an, ar an anarcho capitalist society. Uh, is not only if we have to talk about um, that, that that was sort of a, pro a premise, but we can actually talk about theory. And I think that in theory, anarcho capitalism could also be considered against the NAP principle as um, for, for the reason that without a higher uh, moral authority, uh, whose main uh, and only function is making sure that the general population respect the NAP, we would be left to complete anarchy in which um, basically the stronger ones 
dominate uh, over the weakest ones. And someone might argue that there could be private courts that um, that actually people can appeal to when the NAP is violated. Um, but I would counter argue uh, by the fact that that court, uh, since they would be run like private companies, will be um, will be subjected to um, way more susceptible to corruption uh, than um, publicly held, um, publicly run uh, companies. Uh, sorry, not companies. Um, uh, courts, courts run by by the state, and that's sort of um, a reason why I don't think that. Um, anarcho-capitalism is compatible with the NAP. I think I believe that uh, without a higher moral authority, uh, it is easy, easier to violate the NAP, and uh, people may not have the necessary uh, legal protection um, from the, you know, you know, in order to yeah. actually uh, have justice if the NAP is violated. So, um, in order to stop uh, powerful people from uh, abusing their power and uh, violating the NAP, you would want an even more powerful person who would stop that person, but somehow they wouldn't violate the NAP. And confused how you'd expect that to work. I would argue that um, we should have a minimal state reduced to the core. Um, and to the main functions of uh, making sure that the NAP is respected and punishing those who violate it. And I think that this minimal government can be actually kept in, uh, in check uh, by the general population. And I want to make very clear that I would not tolerate any expansion uh, of the state. I simply believe that uh, private militias and private courts uh, would not be enough in order to prevent uh, the NAP from being violated and punishing those who uh, violate it, because simply there will be people who have um, more money and more power to have uh, better uh, militias and better courts that can uh, protect them um, in, 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 you know, if someone breaks the NAP and it should be judged. Okay, so presumably this state is going to have to be the most powerful of all the uh, subsets of people, right? It's going to have to be the most powerful group so that a more powerful group can't overwhelm it and then violate the NAP. So how exactly would you stop, how exactly would you expect the people to keep the state in check if it is the most powerful entity? Well, I'm not, um, I'm not against a full uh, monopoly uh, of a force by the state. And that's maybe something that um, disassoci disassociates me from classical minarchists. I think that we can, I, I would not argue that um, the state should have a monopoly over uh, the use of uh, violence, um, I would be in favor of, um, you know, the Second Amendment and having guns, and I will be in favor of um, private militias. If someone want, would want to uh, hire private militias in order to defend himself, he could. Um, what I'm arguing is that um, there should be Except from all those private militias, which would be completely legal, there should be one militia, which is the state one, that prevents um, people, um, st stronger people, to break to break the NAP, and that uh, pu um, public militia would defend those who do not have, do not have enough money to uh, have private police for themselves, and yeah, so basically we would prevent a tyrannical. Um, government by having guns um, and rebelling against it if it if it, it will get more uh, tyrannical. So then why do you think it would be impossible for people to quote-unquote rebel against a weaker entity which would be just one of the REAs in an ANCAP, uh, in an ANCAP society 
because surely this state is just a more powerful REA. Why wouldn't they be able to rebel against a less powerful REA? I'm not sure I'm getting your question. So, right, you want to have this uh, militia, which is the state militia, which is um, yes. presumably the most powerful militia, So, because it's, uh, it's supposed to be able to overwhelm any individual militia which might want to violate the NEP. So why wouldn't we just have only those smaller militias? Because if you could re conceivably rebel against this state militia, which is the most powerful one, then why couldn't you rebel against a smaller militia? Because I think we need that militia, as I already said, because there will be some people who do not have enough money. Okay, uh, so it's like to, to protect, to so it's like a safety net sort of thing. Yeah, it, it's like we, you, we, you can have all militias you want, but there is the need for a militia that defends those who do not have okay. uh, power. So I would ask you two questions here. What is prevent A, what is preventing those people who can't afford private militia to protect themselves? Why can't they just form their own militia and do a mutual aid sort of thing? And um, two, how exactly is this state militia found, uh, funded? How are you funding this? Okay. Um, I'm not sure I, I understood the first question. Like um, uh, mutual aid. So um, if there's this community where they're all too poor to uh, hire private security, they could just all agree that they're going to band together like a neighborhood watch type of thing and they'll protect each other. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I would say that I, I would be... Uh, I would say that that is perfectly... Uh, fine, uh, but let's say, for example, that one of these uh, people inside these militias um, actually break, uh, breaks the NAP against another member of the same militia, then uh, I think that we will need a uh, step in by, um, by um, the, the publicly held court, by the state court, because otherwise that would be a conflict of interest. Oh. And regarding, yeah. Okay, so um, what exactly uh, would you do if one of the members of the state uh, violated the NDP against another member of the state? Then would another member, of the, would a third member of the state step in? And if so, why couldn't that happen on the lower level? Um, I would say that since the um, since the um, the the public um, sector, since the since the state uh, would have a, mono a sort of monopoly in in a way that there is no competition against it, um, they will be way less um, susceptible to um, to corruption, and we will have actually judges who can judge fairly, um, even in the case in which people inside the government attack each other. But I wanted to jump to the second question that you asked initially, um, which is how you would fund it. Um, and there are actually, um, yeah, I, I think that you could fund it, fund it by uh, minimal taxation. Um, and you, uh, you would argue that that violates the NAP um, and creates a monopoly of force um, of um, the state, um, but I would um, counter-argue by saying that uh, there would actually not be a monopoly because you, you would, in that case, if you say that there is a monopoly of force by the state, you, um, you would focus yourself only on a, a certain geographical region, but um, I would argue that if you want, you could actually move to another region which may offer lower taxes and uh, better trained um, state militias. So in, in, in a similar way to what already happens uh, inside the United States, which people flee places like California to move to, to Texas for lower taxes. So I would not say that there is a monopoly of force um, of uh, the state because you could actually move to another place um, that uh, you know fits better your uh, your belief or what your idea of taxation should be.
Okay, so towards the corruption thing, I don't understand why you'd think having only a single entity, which is the highest arbitrator, would suddenly be less corruptible, because then you have a single point of failure. If I want to corrupt the legal system, I have to pay one. I have to pay off one single group. Whereas if you have a free market legal system, I have to pay off all sorts of groups, and every time I pay off a judge, nobody else is going to want to use that judge. So that judge has suddenly gone away with, and I've lost all my money. And towards the you can always leave well, thing. Uh, and towards the you can always leave thing, that doesn't make it not aggression. The fact that you can escape a crime doesn't make it not a crime. It is still rape, even if she she could have run away. Are you talking to me? Yes, we're having a debate. Oh, okay, I was yeah, I was wondering if you were uh, answering a question. Um, no, I think that um, in a wait, wait, wait. Uh, before you continue, uh, Zulu, I think you lagged out because m most people are saying that they didn't hear your point. All right, okay. So um, would you like oh, you to reiterate it. yourself? Oh, you heard it. Well, most, I mean, most people didn't. All right, yeah, yeah, so right. I'll I'll reiterate it then. So um, basically, to the corruption thing, I don't understand why you think having a single highest arbitrator would be less corruptible than having many individual arbitrators, because. If there's a single highest arbitrator, I can just pay them off, and then suddenly everybody's fucked. They can't go to a different one. Whereas if there's a free market of arbitrators, if I pay off Johnson & Johnson, uh, suddenly nobody's going to want to use Johnson & Johnson anymore. They're going to use somebody else. They're going to use Anderson & Anderson. Uh, you know. So every time I pay off a company to only side on my favour, that company will never get any business again, and I lose all my money. And towards the point of... Um, you can always leave for the minimal taxation. It doesn't make it not theft. It still is a crime. It still is aggression. So you have this entity, which is now the highest arbitrator, and you're saying it will necessarily violate the NEP. I don't understand how this is suddenly less violate. I, I don't understand how this doesn't violate the NEP, whereas ANCAP does violate the NEP in your mind. I think that uh, in order for the NEP to not be violated, you should pay a minimum tax to um, uh, well that is violating the NAP that to a state that ensures that there is no anarchy because in anarchy well, but, that would be a violation no of the but NAP. like well let's not let's not move you on from this you're saying the N so you're saying you to, to not have the, the NAP, NAP, but you, you are the you are saying in order to not have the in order to not have the NAP violated you have to violate the NAP that is your current position uh, that might sound uh, like a paradox, but your paradox is um, equally, uh, it is it's more absurd than mine, because you say that um, an anarcho-capitalist society would, um, would defend, in an anarcho-capitalist society there would be a defense of the NAP, which is simply not true. At this point, you should actually pick between uh, the NAP not being violated or paying no taxes. Because I don't think I don't see the way by which, uh, if you do not pay any minimal tax to the government, the NAP is uh, insured. Okay, well, like, ANCAP isn't a magic spell which says there will never be any NAP violations, but it isn't inherent to ANCAP that there will be NAP violations. Whereas there is, it is inherent to your system that there will be NAP violations. Like, you cannot possibly get out of NAP violations in your system. So I don't understand how it wouldn't have NAP violations. Because if you don't, if you do not want the NAP to be violated, not, I mean, not fiscally, but like physically, if you do not want to be um, robbed uh, and uh, and I don't know, uh, physically hurt, and uh, you actually want justice for the crime that has been committed against you you need to have a minimal state uh, um, um, that runs courts that ensure that you would have justice okay that's, what, that's why i'm saying do you not understand how ridiculous that is you're saying in order to not have the nap violated we should violate the nap that is self-defeating like immediately so like in your miniature system what if i didn't want to pay taxes would it not be taken from me Because I believe, okay, I do agree with you that most of the taxation. Is, concentration, so now all right. What? 
Okay. Um, I do agree with you that most of taxation is theft. So we are on the same boat in that regard. But no, no I do believe all of taxation is theft. It is not theft if that taxation ensures that the NAP is not violated. No. Well, that's self-defeating because you're assuming that the it if it because then I can just say, hey, uh, I I can take a bunch of money from my neighbor in order to defend my house against robbers. That's ridiculous. Tell tell me in your tell me in your anarcho in how in your anarcho capitalist idealistic uh, world. Those who cannot afford to buy militias for themselves or are not part of uh, are not part of um, any covenant would defend themselves if the NAP is violated. So, in an anarcho-capitalist society, if someone uh, is not able to pay militias or courts. Uh, tell me how, if the NAP uh, is violated, th those people would would defend themselves or have justice for themselves. Well, imagine um, you know if uh, absolutely everybody hated them, then they'd have to defend themselves against uh, attackers, and then you know that's kind of a I don't care. Uh, if uh, you know if uh, they have other people who are in the same situation, then they could form some sort of mutual aid. They could go off, create their own little community, and then everything's fine. Uh, but what well, that's what I'm saying about ANCAP isn't a magic spell that. And cap is built on the pre on the premise that aggression will happen. So, what is the best way to stop aggression from happening? And to do that, you're not going to have a system which necessitates aggression. So, let's get back to that scenario of me robbing my neighbor in order to stop some robbers coming into my house. Because that is exactly what you are saying: is that it's okay to rob somebody in order to stop aggression, but robbery is aggression. So, it makes no sense. It is self-defeating. Yeah, but you actually you you basically repeated the point, the critics that you made to my um, arguing for minimal taxation for a minimal state. But you actually did not answer um, to uh, my question about how people who are not part of um, I did answer it mutual aid, uh, or they can defend uh, themselves. But what if no one wanted to help them? Then they'd what have if, to defend if, themselves. What if they were dicks? I I answered that perfectly. But, yeah, but what if, okay, let's say that you live uh, out of covenants, okay, you live Yeah, if, on if nobody likes you, hill, you have to defend in, yourself. In a cave. ANCAP isn't a magic spell which says that any people will never be violated by anyone ever. If, if 20 people show up at your place and yeah, you'd probably uh, be fucked. want to hurt you, yeah, you would, you would be fucked. But yeah, let's so say therefore that, we okay, must violate you are, the NAP. You are still alive after... You are still alive after that bad experience and you actually want justice for what happened to you, uh, but you don't have money uh, to, um, you know, to go to um, a court. You can't actually pay a private court. So w w you would be fucked because you would not receive justice. <laughs> well, Jesus fucking Christ. Sorry, this fucking everybody keeps coming in with like an aircraft yeah, in their microphone yeah no basically um if you are in this situation where 20 guys have robbed you i imagine you could probably find a sympathetic lawyer who's like hey uh if we get some comp compensation for this give me 20 percent, and i'll represent you you know you could have a situation like that which we already have today and you know if absolutely everybody hates you you might have the nap violated against you and cap isn't a magic spell i've been over this it's not saying that there will never be any aggression ever. It's just saying that there is not aggression inherent to the system. Your system has has aggression inherent to it. You would be the one saying, yes, 20 guys should break into your house to take money from you because we need to defend the poors. Do you realize yeah. how um, paying... Okay. Uh, do you realize how ridiculous it is to um, compare um, um, sort of like, I don't know, 100 bucks uh, like um, every six months, or, or let's say 200 bucks a year 
uh, for um, a publicly held police from 20 guys breaking into your home and wanting to hurt you. Do you realize how, how, how much that is, that is a, a ridiculous comparison? Do you realize how ridiculous it is to not understand what reductio ad absurdum is? Because that's exactly what that is. Explain it to me then. Uh, so uh, it is logically the it is logically identical thing. Saying that it's okay to um, rob twenty dollars means it's okay to rob a hundred dollars. You're saying it's okay to rob. That's what you're saying. That is the abstract logic of the situation. Is you are robbing. That is the act that you are okay with. To say, uh, you know, uh, that the that to take like uh, uh, one of my other reductio ad absurdums I made. Uh, basically, um, imagine that somebody is like a hardcore democracy supporter. They want perfect mob rule in all situations. So they're saying, right, I want democracy where, you know, the majority say something should happen and it should happen. And that would mean that, you know, 9 out of 10 people wanted to have sex here. So that 1% person, they, they should just go to hell. You know, they can't go against democracy here. That's reductio ad absurdum. Um, okay, so, the, what I'm, what I'm arguing is that your ideal society is utopic, just like, um, I don't know, stateless communism. We all know that stateless communism is a utopia, all right, because the state is never going to weigh, it is actually going to increase its size after a communist revolution, but I'm sure I don't need to explain you that, you perfectly mm -hmm. know that, but your vision of a stateless society um, is actually utopic. Um, so, as I said, at the beginning of the debate, the closest thing that we can get uh, um, to uh, a stateless uh, society is American society, because I, I, I believe that in a utopian uh, ANCAM, uh, an, uh, sorry, ANCAP society, uh, there will be the par a paradox of the NAP because uh, you would argue that uh, the NAP is constantly defended, but at the same time, it, it sort of crushes on itself because with no moral authorities, higher moral authorities ensuring that the NAP is not violated, um, the NAP would be violated. You know what I get? Mm -hmm. What I mean? Yeah. So this is special pleading. I don't understand how it's uh, the utopian situation that, um, you know, we just apply free markets evenly across everywhere uh, rather than it, the, rather than assuming, hey, we're going to make this all-powerful monopoly at the top and we're just going to hope that they don't violate the NEP, even though we're saying that they necessarily will violate the, the NEP. But they won't violate it too much. They would never abuse their power, of course. I don't understand how that's not utopian. Because the, the world is not a perfect place. You will always have people who violate the NAP. So the, the question is, how can we go, get as close at, as possible to a society in which individual freedom is respected and the NAP is, is not violated? And I don't see how an ANCAP society uh, would ensure that result because, um, as I said, people with more money will be completely free uh, uh, to uh, run over people who do not have the resources to hire private militias or uh, private courts. Okay, That's right. the same as in today's world in which you, ha yeah. you, have, you need to have um, you know, public um, lawyers who can defend people yeah, yeah, who do yeah. not have so uh, enough money to, for, for public lawyers. Yeah, so to demonstrate my um, problem with that, I would just ask you uh, one simple question. Do you think monopolies or competing firms are superior at providing products? Yes, I totally believe that. No, uh, it's a question. Case, it's, not a, it's not a yes or no question. Do you believe no. that monopolies or competing firms are superior? Which one? Oh, okay. Uh, that monopolies are competing. Oh, I do believe that competing firms. So, are if competing superior. firms are superior, 
uh, why would you say that we should have a monopoly on the most important industries? Because that's an industry which is different from all the other industries. Why? The industry of because clearly the industry of defending uh, an individual from um, from aggression or uh, defending that individual in a court is um, is something in which you want to have less corruption as possible. Yeah, because and competing firms have yeah, less corruption. But, corruption is overhead. But, Competition gets rid of overhead. Money in in a in an ANCAP society in which uh, there are private courts, money would actually uh, be a factor by which people uh, can actually buy the favor of the judge. Uh, uh, well, know, let's say to, yeah. let's say somebody bought the favor of Judge oh. X. Why would the anybody else agree to go to Judge X after that? Because they know that judge is just going to accept bribes and it's just going to be a bidding war. Why would why would you expect that to happen? I don't get your question. Sorry. So uh, let's say A and B have a dispute, and uh, A says, "Hey, let's go to Judge X," and Judge X is saying, "Hey, by the way, guys, I accept bribes." That means both A and B. Why would either of them want to go to that judge? Because they know it's just going to be a bidding war. Whoever bribes the most wins. Why would either of them want that situation? I think that um, there is there is a cultural aspect which plays an important role in a society that is um, culturally uh, responsible judges would um, would respect um, would respect uh, principles uh, universally held principles more than in a sick society in which the judge as you said might say okay I'm uh, well, you haven't answered my question why all sort of nasty thing. Why would you expect in a free market for a judge to accept bribes? Because why would either party A or party B agree to that judge? Because they know it's going to be a bidding war if they go to that judge. Uh, so you are... Okay, let, let, let me try to understand. You are asking me why a, a judge uh, may not be susceptible to no. corruption? So I'm asking you why in a free market... Let's imagine a scenario. Judge X okay. is in a free market yes. and he is saying he accepts he accepts bribes. Why would either A or B, they have a dispute, A and B have a dispute. Why would A want to go to that judge? Because he's saying, hey, what if B bribes him more? And why would B want to go to that judge? Because he say, might say, hey, what if A bribes him more? They know there's going to be in a bidding war here. They're going to be bidding who, bri who bribes the most. Why would either of them want that judge? Why wouldn't they say, hey, let's go to a judge who doesn't accept bribes and we'll get his opinion instead. Yes. It's going to be a lot cheaper for both of us. Yes. Yes. So in a free market, why would you expect why would you expect judges to accept bribes? Why wouldn't you expect them to not accept bribes? Because then they're going to get a whole lot more business. Because uh, judges would accept bribes in an ANCAP society as well because you can no, never but why? get fully read of corruption. Nope. Why would they accept bribes, though? Because then they're going to lose business. They will make less money if they accept bribes in a free market. But nobody would know that they accepted bribes. If nobody would know, then, how, would then who would know to bribe them? Clearly somebody knows. They would... Yeah, the the one who 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 gave him the bribes, but it uh, would so, be yeah. a secret. So let, let's Their say... Their reputation let, would not be ruined. Okay. Let's say A goes to that judge and says, hey, I'm going to pay you money if you if you rule in my favor. And he's like, okay. Then A would surely be thinking, wait a minute, what if B does this exact same thing? And then we're going to be bidding here. Why would you want to go to a judge who accepts bribes unless, you, unless that's the only judge in the land? If you have other choices, surely you would want a fair judge. You, yeah, you want to have a fair judge. You can go to another judge which is who, who is also part of the same state system. No, no, I'm talking in a free market. Why would you accept bri why would you expect a bribery to be a thing? <laughs> because um, okay, I, I sort of get your point. You are saying, and I fully agree with you on that, that the less um, the um, 
the less uh, powerful the government is, the more free market is left wide, the less corruption there will be. So I, I fully agree with that. But I'm just saying that we cannot get to a point of complete elimination of the state uh, because in an NCAP society, there will sort of be a paradox uh, in which bribery yeah. would uh, okay you've would gone you've back. gone over this paradox before we've gone over this i'm asking you economically why would you ex- give me like a praxeologic argument for in a total free market why would you expect mm-hmm. judge x who accepts bribes to get any business why would you, why would anyone in that scenario uh, the judge would surely love it to where he would accept bribes but he knows that he won't get any customers that way because why would either person I already want a told judge you who accepts bribes? The bribery would be secret. Yeah, okay, but so, it's clearly somebody is able to figure out that this judge is accepting of bribes. He would say, "Hey, judge, do you will you accept my bribe?" And he says yes. And they're like, "Wait a minute, what if my opponent also does the same thing as me?" And then suddenly, I can't trust this judge either. If I am bribing a judge, I know I, he is not trustworthy. So why would we want that in a free market? I understand why that would arise in a... I understand why that would arise when you have a monopoly on judges, because then you only have to pay off one judge, and then basically they can't say, hey, I want, I don't want to use that judge. There's like, tough, that's the judge. You use that judge or you don't get justice. Wait, guys, guys, let me assert myself real quick, so, because we're going into circles there. Uh, the point that uh, Zulu is trying to make is that oh. since company A knows that that this company can bribe a judge company it will assume that company b can do the same and in a principle in which there's a discipline of constant dealing uh, a company wouldn't go to this judge because she already knows that the judge can be bribed yeah but so okay. ra- ra- rather than rather than going into circles into this one point let's just try to go on to something else because i feel like this is just going to be a circular argument yeah, yeah. there I sure. would just like close so, my yeah. I, I would just make a a very quick statement about just this point, and then we will close it. Um, I would argue that in a minarchist society, in which courts are publicly held, if the um, if the judge uh, would actually be found to be uh, guilty of accepting bribes, he would his reputation would be ruined in a minarchist society as well as he and he would be out of jobs. Uh, he he would not have he will no longer have his job and he would be um, basically um, fired. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. But, let, yeah, that... let's move on to um, the special pleading argument again, where you're say you have accepted that competing firms are superior, but then you have said that we want a monopoly on the most important industries. Why I... should we trust that monopoly when we wouldn't trust it anywhere else? I think that uh, there is there is actually not a monopoly because you your vision is too focused on one singular region in which there is a monopoly of force by uh, a state entity. But uh, if you actually uh, take a look at the um, wider picture, um, you could argue that uh, there would actually be a competition between states, between minarchist states, uh, to uh, actually uh, lower the taxes in order to incentivize people to uh, to move there and migrate there. So let's say, for example, in a minarchist world, um, Romania provides a certain um, type of uh, state services, which are limited to, as I said, uh, courts and um militias uh, owned by the government and Honduras provides a better, more efficient and less costly uh, service, then you would be you could be able to move from Romania to Honduras. And this is something that in, in a way uh, states already do, well, at least the, intel- the clever ones, not the dumb ones, uh, which is to lower taxes to attract more people. Yeah. So this is to say that no state. So there will not be a, a, a competition. Sorry, but, but there will that... not be a competition between companies, but a competition between uh, minarchist states. But yeah. it, it it will still be a competition. But that's to say that currently we don't ha- the states aren't monopolies, which is I think ridiculous. 
because states currently do that, as you said. So you're saying that currently states aren't monopolies. They would be. They would be a monopoly inside this, the, yeah. the nation border. So why don't have competition you, 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 inside the nation out, border? I'm saying this is special pleading. You're saying we want a monopoly on these very specific industries within this region. Because you do agree that states are monopolies here. I understand that there are other places where that monopoly doesn't exist. That's not what monopoly means. Yeah. Um, so, I don't really see what, what point you're trying to make. So, like, okay. Are you asking me a question? Or? It's special pleading, right? You are saying that competing firms are superior to monopolies. Okay. States are monopolies, unless you think states aren't monopolies, in which case we can talk about that. And so, if states are monopolies, and competing firms are superior to monopolies, how about we do away with the states, and instead have competing firms? And that will be a superior situation. I would say that if you take a look at um, a world filled uh, with minarchist states, you would argue that... Are you going to go through this they... exact same thing again? They are, they would actually act like... Uh, oh, yes, so, do you think currently states aren't monopolies? Uh, currently, they are monopolies. But they but do the exact monarchist. same competition, where they might one state might lower their taxes to attract people. No, they are competing right now, in an identical way as your minarchist states are. No, because right now... Uh, the states are involved in way more things than they would be involved <sighs> yes, in American society. Well, For example, welfare that, that programs. Doesn't matter. There will not be any welfare programs in, uh, in America. But society. that doesn't matter. They still are competing in the same fashion. So what, one of your minarchist states might go, hey, I'm going to try and do some welfare because you're already kind of doing welfare because you're doing welfare security. So they might say, hey, we're going to expand the security where we also defend... Where we also give they you free health care. And, then, and then you're worse. saying, you're sa yes, I know that. And you're saying, well, then we're going to have competition. So you're saying currently states aren't monopolies. That is the point you're making. And if it's not, then you're inconsistent. I'm saying that currently states are actually monopolies. But for other reasons than the one you are pointing at, they are monopolies because of welfare programs, because of high taxation rate, and all that kind of stuff. But um, in um, American society, uh, they would actually they would actually lack uh, act like um, as I already said, competing companies. So that's my point yes, there. And I'm saying. They're monopolies over more things currently. I agree with you there that a Manicure state is a monopoly over fewer things, but they still are a monopoly. Yeah. And you're saying that they're not a monopoly because they compete with other states, but currently states compete with each other. That is currently the case, and yet it still doesn't disqualify them from being monopolies. I would say, uh, as I already said, that the state would be a necessary evil, although it would be minimal, the, the evil will be reduced to, to almost being non-existent. I know it will still be there, but if we actually went full ANCAP, um, no, then let's, let's not sidestep this. Create... You are saying that they would be monopolies. Either they are, either Minica states are monopolies, or and or currently states aren't monopolies. You can't have it both ways. Which one is it? <laughs> All right, I'm saying that they are right now in 2020 uh, okay 2021, so but therefore minarchist states are also monopolies they would be monopolies only regarding okay uh, thank you private so they courts and so yes America. yes yes so they are monopolies but they would be okay yes monopolies. yes they would be monopolies over okay the, the right so they, are, so they are so they are monopolies so they are monopolies and you said monopolies are inferior to competing firms so how about we have competing firms on those industries which they monopolize rather than a monopoly? Because they, although they would be monopoly inside the... the uh, Don't you know, go into the, this whole they compete the with other countries economy. again because then we're back to currently states are monopolies and you agree that they are monopolies. 
So, so currently, okay, okay, so currently wow. states are monopolies, minarchist states are monopolies. No, wait, let, let me ask you a question. What would, in your, um, in your perfect NCAP view, how would, in your M perfect NCAP view, um, uh, how would we avoid to actually create monopolies? Because I think that in the, in the long run, in an NCAP society, we would create companies that actually enlarge themselves so much that they become state-like uh, companies and actually would be more, in the long run, more oppressive than okay, a yeah. minimal so, minarchist state. So, you, so how would we avoid um, a monopoly in ANCAP? Okay, great. So, um, let's say, first of all, it's kind of ridiculous to say, I worry about monopolies, so therefore we should find a monopoly to stop monopolies from forming. I think that's self-defeating. But also, I'll just bring up... Uh, Jung's made a point about this before. I'm just trying to find it. Uh, Egon. That's, uh, yeah, here we go. So, let's say uh, I somehow acquire 100% of the market share. What now? One, I, pr I price gouge because I control 100% of market X. Competition arises because people can do it for cheaper. My monopoly crumbles. And he points out that this has started to happen to Standard Oil even before antitrust laws were in place. Or two, every time someone new tries to outcompete me, I lower my prices. Given that most firms operate at a 1-3% to profit margin, doing this is obviously not feasible long term, term, and they will either return to competitive pricing, opening them back up to competition, or will go out of business, destroying the monopoly. So I don't actually get your question. I, I was answering your question. Oh, okay. So I, yeah, but you still have not uh, explained me how you would prevent um, I did. a state like monopoly. the market. You wouldn't expect a monopoly to arise in a market. You only expect. Guys, a I think you disagree on how monopolies form. I believe uh, Zulu, you're on the side that monopolies cannot arise in a free market, and Walker, you're uh, stating that monopolies can arise in a market. So how about we discuss economics? Yeah, that. So I gave uh, Jung's yeah, argument I, for um, that. I mean, we can talk about economics if you want, but I'm not particularly well versed in econ, me. so it, it's going to run dry pretty quickly. Okay. No, okay. Let's try to do what um, Liberty and those suggested because I think we, we were. That's what we're currently to, doing. Uh, um, I think that, okay, I personally have nothing against the formation of a monopoly, okay? If um, a monopoly would arise in a sector such as, I don't know, um, candies, okay, or chocolate bars, I would have no nothing against it if even if it is it would acquire 100 percent of uh, the entire uh, market even if every company uh, would be under the same one okay but what i'm saying is that while this um this uh concept is perfectly valuable for every single uh for almost every single company such as i don't know companies that produce TVs, companies that produce, yeah, you name them, you name them. It will not be acceptable for um, this, the primary function of uh, that a minarchist state should have. Because um, in a, in a, <clears throat> in an anarcho-capitalist society, I would think that it will be um, very dangerous uh, if monopolies uh, over um, arbitration, you know, militias. What? So you are you saying that you think it would be dangerous if there was a monopoly over arbitration that formed in an ANCAP system? Yes, I would be. I would so, be very scared. So we shouldn't have if, a monopoly if, on arbitration. I think that we should not have a, a monopoly on the use of force by a private well, company well, uh, because that's so. You, you were saying that you were worried that a monopoly on arbitration might arise in ANCAP, but your system that you are proposing is a monopoly on arbitration. That's exactly what you propose. Yes, I'm, I am perfectly aware of that. So your, uh, your worst case scenario for ANCAP is your state, system that you are state, proposing. A 
state would I mean, that's pretty lost. fucking good for ANCAP. If the worst case the scenario ANCAP. that my system can come to is your system, why don't we just go with my system? And, you know, worst case scenario, so you'll get what you want. You, I will explain it to you because a uh, monopoly of force by a minarchist minimal state is different from uh, a monopoly of force uh, by a private company because a private company would have no uh, constitution which prevents it from doing all sorts of no, things. No, because the constitution all works sort of so well for things. America. The constitution, that stopped yes, America from restricting gun rights so much. A, a constitution, a constitution we, we, we would make sure that a constitution works how would you uh, make sure? By the, the force of the state. How would you make sure? Because, I mean, the, the I mean, American Constitution was pretty sure well that... written. It said, underscored three times, shall not be infringed. Do not infringe on gun rights. And look what we have today. So many gun rights have been infringed. You can't go out and buy, like, a fully auto. You can't buy a fucking bump stock. There's red yes, flag laws all over the place. Element. Shall not be infringed, yes, underline, element. write it in bold. And that is, you could not be clearer in your constitution, and yet it failed. Okay. Constitutions are not a good yes, tool. it's failing, and I will explain you why. Uh, that's a cultural, uh, a cultural element, because as time progresses in the United States, people are, are uh, less and less willing to defend freedom. But, um, in, because I think that eventually there is no perfect system in order to avoid, um, you know, the, um, the you know people losing their individual rights and the rights to uh, to have guns. But so your I think that in, your proposal in an ANCAP society that will that would happen as well. So what we need to okay. do is um, uh, have a minimal government. So in a sort of constant strive to remind people why it is necessary that the state should not have a monopoly, um, you know over uh, our lives. Do you not understand how that's self -feeding? So it's a cultural element, not a, not, a, not a political one. Well, okay, but like in in your system, you are saying that you agree that uh, constitutions won't work because over time the government will degrade their... Uh, they'll change the interpretation and whatnot to get more and more power. So I don't understand how even if you're a little... Um, system, if you, I don't understand how if your minarchist well. system had a perfectly written constitution, it would still, the interpretation would change over time and it would get fucked. How about instead of that, we just don't have one arbitrator to rule them all? How about we have competing firms? And then it doesn't matter if the culture changes because you couldn't, there is no single power to degrade. There are so many. Because I think that over time, um, as the culture changes, people would okay. Let, let's say, for example, people would in a long term, um, in a long term uh, time, in an ANCAP society, people would um, start sort of start forming um, state-like uh, asso associations, which would eventually become the state. I don't understand why so that's, that... Well, can you walk me through that? Why would you expect them to form state... First of all, what is a state-like organization? What would that be? Okay, let's assume that a monopoly... So um, is this Nozick's argument? So, what? Is this Nozick's argument? I believe he's the one who... Yeah, is... I, I guess. So I, would, I would say so. But, um, okay, let's say that a company, uh, a militia... Um, gets bigger and bigger over time and eventually becomes a monopoly. Uh, so that would be um, a state, uh, a state-like organization, but um, you would argue, well, then it would just become a minarchist state in that case because um, there would be a monopoly of force by the state. Uh, but to which I would argue that it would not be a minarchist society because in that case, in an ANCAP uh, society in which a private company has um, um, the monopoly of force, that private company, since no constitution has been written, would uh, have the, the We've right We've already been to, over how uh, constitutions don't work. We already agree that constitutions don't work. 
constitution constitutions are not okay constitutions are not simply a piece of paper okay constitutions do work in the case in which people strive in order to make sure that the constitution works okay so constitutions okay. work the if everybody uh, is already doing what the constitution wants them to do that seems like it's not working that seems like it's just by happenstance everyone agrees with it it's not actually forcing anything to happen the second the state doesn't want to follow the constitution they don't yeah but yeah e exactly they, they the, the constitution stops working when people when stop the state doesn't want to follow it, it. yeah but it, okay yeah if the state doesn't want to follow the constitution then the uh, let's say that a minarchist, let's say, for example, that in a minarchist state, okay, the state at, at a certain point stops uh, respecting uh, the constitution, which is based on libertarian principles. In that case, people would have all the rights to rise uh, and overthrow these wannabe uh, dictatorial state. Okay, well, does that so, ever happen? Did that happen in the U.S.? I don't. I don't think it did. I seem to recall that we still have a U.S. government. Um, it actually, it actually did happen in seventeen seventy six. Yeah, it happened in seventeen seventy six against the British government, but not against the U.S. government. The U.S. government is currently infringing on gun rights massively. So we know at some point they must have gone against the constitution, and yet there was no uh, hallelujah revolution. Well. Um... It, 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 I would argue that it has still not happened, but you don't know about the future. Uh, so, you would you be, but you're saying that uh, the second they start going against the constitution, people would go up in arms and they'd rebel. Uh, but it's been hundreds of years now that the U.S. has been going against the constitution, and I'm not seeing any rebellion. Mm-hmm. So, uh, why? So, you are you? Do you agree that you're wrong there? That people would rebel because they don't seem to be. No, I would not say that I'm wrong. Well, I mean, so you I, think people have rebelled in the U.S. Well, I can't, and that the U.S. is currently uh, in anarchy, and that the U.S. government was taken down years ago. Do you think that that is the situation in the U.S. That the U.S. federal government no longer exists? No, I think I think that um, people are constantly losing more and more freedom uh, yes freedom. and they, they are not rebelling more and more and more who, who says so i mean okay I, so you think um, the u.s government have you taken a look at what so the you, u.s was in 2020 okay yeah so do you think did you live under a rock well the u.s federal government still exists i do believe do you think it doesn't exist well, I, I do believe that uh, the federal government exists. So it, is it exists. Maybe so there wasn't a rebellion. The future, at least, at the very there least, there wasn't a successful rebellion the second the state started going against the constitution, which is what you said would happen in a minarchist state. Because, I mean, the US is your minarchist state. That's exactly what it is. Well, as I can... Again, as I already said, uh, I would go back uh, to the cultural element. The reason why there still has there has still not been a rebellion inside the United States is because the uh, the cultural the culture is um, well, I would say intoxicated by anti freedom ideas. But, mm -hmm. but uh, okay, that... but to be clear, your argument was that when a minarchist state started going against the Constitution, that people would rebel. That was your argument say, to say that a minarchist state wouldn't become tyrannical. But we saw with the US, the first, the f only minarchist state I'm aware of in modern times, that didn't happen. The minarchist state because did start going against the constitution state, and nobody has rebelled yet. More. It's been hundreds of years now and they ha still haven't rebelled. And you keep saying, oh, the rebellion's coming, the rebellion's coming, but it's clearly not. Because in a minarchist state, people would be way more aware of how much important but the u.s was a minarchist state in fact i'm pretty sure earlier you said that the u.s is a good example of a minarchist state you said that the closest we can get to individual freedom was the united states those were your words i believe so the u.s is your perfect minarchist state and you believe that in your perfect minarchist state the second it started going against the constitution 
people would rebel, and yet they didn't rebel in the US, which is your perfect minarchist state. They are not rebelling in the US because of cultural factors and because of... Uh, state, yeah, so um, why would they in your minarchist state? State-run agencies state-backed agencies okay so why wouldn't your America uh, state have these state-backed agencies companies. everything you are about to say about why the u.s citizens aren't rebelling applies equally to your argument saying that they would rebel in your America exactly. society because the u.s is your America exactly. society so every well, single yeah, argument you're America about to make as to why the u.s hasn't experienced rebellion i'm just gonna i'm just gonna get like a pipe and angle it right back at you and just fire every single point you make right back at yourself because you're arguing with yourself now no because the u.s is not a perfect minarchist society but you the you cited the u.s as a minarchist society that was you no no i don't think yes I you did you said the closest we can get to a perfect minarchist society is um no no i don't think you said the closest no, we can get to abs the closest, the closest we can get, get to individual freedom is the u.s and the closest we can get to no. individual freedom, Wait. I that would understand from your position, me... would be minarchy. So therefore, the U.S. is minarchy. Let me rephrase what I said. The closest we can get to an NCAP society would be a minarchist one. But I did not say that the U.S. is fully minarchist. No, no. You specifically say, you said the closest we could get to individual freedom would be something along the lines of uh, uh, the U.S. So the U.S. would be your would be an example of minarchy. You said After that earlier. At this point, it has been the closest we have got. We have gone to minarchist society, but I'm not saying that we should not. Uh, we we cannot have a more freedom-like society than you than the, uh, what the US, so how, U.S. U.S. originally was. How much smaller government do you think you could get from uh, early U.S.? Because that was pretty fucking small. Well. Again, a, a, a small government would be uh, one which respects uh, only the minarchist principles, which is to run courts and, um, and again, uh, I'm pretty, private, I'm pretty uh, sure no, sorry. all that, I'm, pre I'm pretty sure all the early U.S. did was courts and defense, and they didn't even do most of the defense. They let that uh, for like privateers and minutemen. No, they did not. They did not only do that because there was there were there were many other. Uh, yeah, it it surely has has become bigger over time. Yeah. So uh, in the early days, that's, that's it, was sure, it, it, it was minarchy. In, in the early days, it was not only American society. I would say. Uh, I was not only American society because there were already state agencies. So there wouldn't be any state agencies in minarchy. There will only be courts and militias. Okay, what else was there in the early U.S.? Um, I I would say that, um, for example, um, re um, religious associations played a bigger part in back in the days. No, so um, okay, what state yeah. industry? So you're saying the state industries in our minarchy would only be courts and defense, and revolutionary u.s in 1776 united states they, they they i don't know of anything else they did and they didn't even really do a whole lot of defense they left that to privateers and to minutemen like they did very little in 1776 in terms of defending people and in terms of arbitration so i'm asking you because i'm not like an expert on u.s policy in 1776 what is the agency that you see, that you think, okay, that's not a minarchy. Because surely, if you think it's not a minarchy, you must know something where they did some extra industry that they had monopolized. So what would that be? I would argue that, for example, uh, cultural, um, cultural... No, no, not uh, cultural or anything. What industry, other than courts no, and no, defense, no, 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 no. I, I did mean, the U.S. have agencies, in 1776? Agencies related agencies related to uh the spreading of culture such as schools did they do schooling back in 1776 let's google this i don't I'm, actually know about I'm this pretty... so yeah, it's the I'm department pretty... of education yeah. i believe does schools in the u.s
so they just accidentally press enter. I believe they didn't. I'm just checking it now. It was formed in, in 1979, so quite a bit after 1776. Yeah, but that you would argue that that's part of the early days of the US. Uh, no, 1979 is not early days of the US. 1979 oh, is nine... quite recently. Yes. So, 19... okay, I... so sorry, in sorry, 1776. I my bad, okay, my yeah. bad, my bad. I, he I heard another day. Sorry. <coughs> so, in... But I think I think the point that you are failing to understand. No, 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 no. I, well, let's let's really get this. So in 1776, what did the U.S. government do apart from courts and defense? Because that I is your definition of minarchy, that. that they only do courts and defense. So what did they do other than courts and defense? I would argue that um, as again, a religion was another big thing back in the days. And uh, they would have uh, state um, state backed um, religious agencies. For for example, they would um, uh, give loans to religions is, re religious institutions. Did they? You have like a yeah. link for that? Yeah, I I I studied that, but I, I, I let me check if I can find some. But again, since uh, the, we have never actually gotten to a, a, a perfect monarchy. No, no, but that's what we're checking right now. We're checking to see if the US was a monarchy in 1776. Because if it was, then you have your monarchy, which is clearly devolved into not a monarchy. I would say that another big thing that made not the US America state was uh, expansionism. And uh, which is something that mirrors. Okay, well, is then let's check when. Um, what was it? Uh, Manifest Destiny. When was Manifest Destiny start? Uh -huh. Okay. The, in the classical definition of Manifest Destiny, we could argue that it was in the early uh, 1800s. Uh, but I would say that Manifest Destiny. Oh, okay, so it was coined in 1845, which is also quite a bit after 1776. Yeah, yeah. I was not. I was finishing the the, uh, the argument. It was coined back back in the days, but the expansion is uh, was already taking place before that date. It was already taking place before the rebellion against uh, the British, and actually, it was one of the one of the causes for the rebellion because uh, many people wanted to expand westward, and the British government did not allow so them to do that. So wait, so your minarchist state would never allow people to found and homestead new land? Is that what you're saying? No, my minarchist state will not aggressively uh, invade other nations. Sure, but there were no like nations out there. Yeah, there were actually uh, central, yeah, big chunks of um, of now Western U.S. was a part of uh, Mexico. Uh, and if before Mexico, uh, sure, but did Mexico legitimately own that land? I mean, a good deal of that land was completely unclaimed, unowned, untamed wilderness. And you're saying that then going out and wanting to settle that land is expansionism. So would a minarchist state not allow that? So, like, because under your current definition of minarchy, it is it only controls the courts, uh, defense, and it doesn't expand. So by not expanding. Would it not allow people to go out and homestead virgin wilderness? Um. So wait. Uh, I I would. I. Okay. You are clearly not understanding what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that people want to move out of uh, the uh, state boundaries. They are perfectly capable of doing that, and the state should let them do that. What I'm against is states sponsored and state actually inspiring and incentivizing people to um, go out of the boundaries so that once enough people from the original country take over um, uh, take over um, that piece of land then um, uh, this, the, the, the US government would 
basically uh, make that piece of land that was colonized part of the United States, therefore expanding the state. So you aren't fine but, with a minarchist yeah, state let, expanding into let's virgin keep, wilderness, untamed land, like completely unclaimed by anybody, unowned, nobody lives there. You're but it was not unclaimed. But it was not unclaimed by anyone. It was actually claimed by other countries. Like, mm, uh, again, there was a good deal of the U.S., example. which was completely virgin wilderness. Like, understand there were like probably some nomadic tribes would move around there every so often, but there were there are vast but, swaths like, of the U.S. which nobody let, had ever touched before the settlers went there. Let's keep focusing. Let's okay. Let's no, keep let's keep focusing, focusing on this. On Let's keep, let's keep, no, no, let's keep focusing on why um, the U.S. was not a perfect minarchist state. Yeah, that's I, what we're I, doing. I, I said, this is the topic yes, we're on. And, so you're saying they're not minarchist because they are expansionist. I can give you other Okay, so do you, do you want to cede the, the expansionist argument then? Yeah, we can, yeah, we can, we can keep talking about this if you want. Okay, but I wait, already do you have want to ones. cede the expansionist argument? I already have other ones. Do you, you okay, so yeah, do you want to cede the expansionist argument to move on to a different argument? Yes, okay. Okay. So what is your other argument that the US was not minarchy? Another um, argument I would make is that um, the way um, courts were... Um, were structured in the U.S. Constitution, and I would um, I would make the case of, for example, the Supreme Court, because the Supreme Court has been since the beginning a very uh, politicized uh, institution. So uh, basically, we we still have to this day judges that are appointed uh, by uh, the president who is in charge, uh, which already carry with them, uh, you know, a political uh, uh, leaning. And this is something that many other countries that are not minarchists, that have way more flaws than the U.S., don't have. So countries which are way worse than the U.S. in many other regards are actually better than the U.S. when it comes to the Supreme Court, because in other countries, the Supreme Court is not politicized as in the U.S. Okay, and so something the point is the courts aren't minarchists. So what exactly would be yeah. a minarchist court system? But did you actually check and confirm that uh, uh, what, I'm, what I was saying regarding uh, the, the origin of the Supreme Court? I, I don't care about the origin of the Supreme Court right now. What I care about is you're saying that the U.S. No, courts. No, no, okay, you right. You you're saying that the U.S. court system isn't minarchist for whatever reason. We can get to that, but what exactly would be a minarchist court system, in your opinion? Because before it was just they have to monopolize the court system. Now you're saying they have to do it in a very specific way. So what would be that specific way that they have to monopolize it and they have to have this structure? What would that structure be? There would be an independent um, of. Um, the um, there would be an independence of courts from uh, the uh, from the government. Whoa, whoa, whoa! But you said the government has to monopolize the courts, so you're completely going against what you said before. No, I'm not. I'm not you absolutely that. are. You said the government had to monopolize the court system in order to provide for the poor, but now you're saying the courts have to be independent yes. from the government. How is that possible? They can be cultural. So who who appoints the judges if not the government? Because you're saying the reason, that the government no, can't appoint wait, the judges, so who appoints no, the judges? No, the reason why, the reason why who appoints the judges? Are not the reason why courts are not independent in the U.S. I, I don't care about the U.S. right now. I'm asking about your perfect minarchist court system. I don't care about the U.S. at the moment. We can get to that again. I was answering that. So, right, okay. So your perfect minarchist court system, what would it look like? My perfect court yeah. So I want to know what the minarchist court system is, so that I can refer back to it. That is, or that is independent from politics. So it has to be independent from the government. It, being independent from politics is not the same as being independent from the government. Then how, so how not? So I mean. who who let appoints the judges I mean. then? Well, let let's get back to that. Who appoints the I mean. judges? No, no. <laughs> let me finish. The judges are appointed in America's state. I don't care about America. 
I care about your perfect minarchist court system. In your perfect minarchist court system, how are the judges appointed? How do I go from being not a judge to a judge, if not through any sort of political means? How do I do that? How do I make that jump? So I'm okay. Right. So I'm okay. Right. Just tell me. I am in minarchy. I am in casual. Okay. Right. I yes 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 yes. I am in your casual. I'm in casual Walker's minarchist state, and I am an individual citizen, and I want to be a judge. Who would I go to? How do I get appointed to be a judge? Who appoints me? All right. The reason. Okay, I will make you. Okay, if you will give me two minutes without interrupting me, in which I can show you the difference between the U.S. and America state regarding politics. I don't care politics. about America. I don't care about America. No, you have to care. You have to care. Let's just if you go through your system, and then we can apply it to America later. I right now, I just need to know your system how judges are appointed, so that I can refer back to it. That's all I want to know. In your system, how are judges appointed? They are appointed as they are already appointed in many states in which the, uh, the, in which the president do, does Don't not... Don't talk appoint. about America. Let's, let's pretend America doesn't exist. How in casual Walker's minarchy are judges appointed? If you don't know, you can just say that you don't know, and we can move on to something else. But you are acting like you do know, because your entire argument is based on how judges are appointed. It, you need All to know right. how judges are appointed in order to continue this debate. So how are they appointed? They would be appointed as they are already appointed in countries like Italy, France, uh, or uh, Germany, in which they are not politicized. So how is that? I, I don't know how judges are appointed in Italy or Germany. I I would say that it's not important to see how... It is important, because I need to... Because no. you're saying that what, America... Because you're that saying that it's not okay. Not appointed by the president. They are but how is that? Is that I want to know how that is, because I genuinely do not know how it can be that a government-run court system can possibly appoint judges without the government ever having any say in those judges. I don't understand how that could uh, possibly be the case. Let me check that. I, I can assure you that it is not, it is not politicized, so that you will never see, like, conservative Okay, leaning, right, so uh, just go uh, run me through your system. Just tell me. Just tell me how in your system they would appoint judges. Let me check it. All right. So, most of um, Supreme Court judges in Italy, or let's say Germany as well, are appointed by the President of the Republic. Okay. But you have to understand that the President of the Republic in Italy is not a politicized figure. So, he does not have. It, is he a, a member of the government? Figure. No, he is not a member of the government. Who is, who is he then? He is a ceremonial figure whose main function, function, function is doing stuff like appointing judges to the Supreme Court. Who pays his but paychecks? Not... Who pays his paychecks? Yeah. Is he just some guy that they're like, hey, uh, by the way, dude, you're the president. And also, who appoints the president of the Republic? I just want to know what sort of affiliations he has. So who appoints the president of the Republic? Who pays his who pays his paychecks? That's what I want to know. 
well, since he is a, a state, um, a state-backed figure, of course. Oh, so the state backs state. him, and so the state pays his paychecks, and the state appoints him, and apparently he has no affiliation with the state. He couldn't possibly be corrupted by the state. Is that your current argument? He is way less susceptible. So he is pay- his paychecks he are paid is, by the he state. Is not a politicized figure. He is he appointed. Is like he is appointed by the state, and his paychecks are paid by the state. And you think that this guy couldn't possibly be the state? Couldn't just go to somebody and say, "Hey, uh, we're going to appoint you if you choose these judges," and because you were going to pay your paychecks, by the way, buddy. So you're going to do what we say. You don't think that situation could possibly arise in your minarchist state? I think that if um, widespread corruption surfaced in a minarchy state, then people would be against it. But since the government would be so small that its only primary function would be appointing judges and owning a militia, a militia it would be very, very, there would be very, very low okay, but percentage of corruption. You are saying, okay, let's not go into the whole they will revolt thing again so right now you are saying that this guy who is paid by the state and is appointed by the state he has no sort of conflict of interest when it comes to appointing judges is that what you're saying no i'm not saying that he has a conflict of interest so he does have a conflict of interest so he's going to be biased towards the state because Italy is not a minarchist state. But that you were saying that their ju- their judicial system would be your minarchist judicial system. So let's let's ignore every single yes. state for now. Let's pretend it that gov- okay, Italy's, right? Ita- it would be Italy's judicial system, but removing all the other functions that fun- functions functions that the state right. has in Italy, such as uh, okay. such as elections, for example. Right. Yes. Yeah, so get rid of all the elections and everything. You're saying that this individual. Let's call him uh, the appointer. This appointer, he his job is to appoint judges. And you're saying he is paid by the state and the state appoints him. The state appoints the appointer and they pay his wages. And you think that this guy is not going to have any sort of bias towards picking judges which will f- rule in favour of the state. Is that what you're saying? What I would ask you is... Uh... Do you think that in an ANCAP society in which courts are... No, don't uh, ask me any questions. Owned, Answer my question. Not any, there Answer will not be any question. bias. No, I'm asking your question. I understand question. that you want to escape this because you realize that you have gotten down to the point where you cannot answer anymore. But I really need no, to understand... That's not what I'm doing at I all. really need to understand how your court system is going to work because you're saying that there's this guy who's paid by the state... The state, the state appoints him. This guy is in all... He is a statist, right? He is paid by the state. He's basically a member of the state, right? The state can hire him and fire him at will. He is the state. And he gets to appoint all the judges. Do you think the, that the state won't be a little bit biased in their own favour when appointing judges? I think that... Uh... A, a certain amount of bias is inevitable, but in an anarcho-capitalist society, that bias would also apply to uh, uh, appointing judges in, uh, w- within private companies. So, right. And so, coming back to the point, coming back, sorry, let me finish. Coming back to the point of the difference between the U.S. and this system is that I know this the US, is not the U.S. I know the it's private, not the U.S. The pri- in the U.S., the Supreme Court I is know. appointed by the president, who is I a know. political figure. So, and he's the, why is he a political figure? Because there are elections. There will not be any elections in a minarchist state. So, there will not be any bias by the uh, by the president to appoint. Uh, um, people to the Supreme Court who align with his view of the world, whoa, 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 or at whoa. least if there if there was any bias, it would be way le- way uh, more small than it is in the current U.S. Um, 
system in which yeah. the president, who is either a Republican or a Democrat, appoints judges that has that had that who have yeah views yeah. So I understand. Uh, I understand. I understand the. I understand the time preference argument. Hop has made that argument before. I understand that democracies are worse than like you know, uh, monarchy. Right. I understand that is the argument. So in this minarchy, but you are still going to have where the top level arbitrators are going to be necessarily biased towards the state. So if you have any sort of dispute with the state, it's going to be biased in their favor. So I understand how this is a fair court system. I'm not saying that it would be 100% fair, but I would, I would say, I would argument... How is it even slightly uh, fair? It is way more fair than what we have in the Imagine... US, which is not, which okay, is yes. the reason why the US is not a minarchy state. Okay, yes, Therefore, okay, I accept that, I, I accept I that, I accept that, claim, I accept claim that, that, made initially, I, that, accept that. I accept that, perfect minarchy state I accept that, I cede that, that ground to you, it's okay, buddy, I cede that so to you. So let's, we're moving on, okay? So let's, okay, you. right. So you, you have given up on that oh, point. Oh my fucking God. So let's say I have a dispute with you and you are the government and you get to appoint all the judges. How is that fair? How is how are you how am I gonna have any sort of um assurance that the judge won't be biased towards you because all of his paychecks are paid by you and you appoint him? How am I gonna how am I gonna assume that that's gonna be fair? You you can't be one hundred percent sure about that because you don't live in any I can't, how can I be even a little bit sure about it? Imagine if uh, I you accused you. Sure imagine, okay, right. Imagine if I accused you of stealing my TV, and you said, "Okay, let's go to a judge." And then we went to court, and the judge was you wearing a mustache and glasses. How am I going to assume that's going to be even a little bit fair? Sorry, repeat the question. So let's say uh, I accuse you of stealing my TV, and you're like, "All right, okay, don't worry. We'll go to the court." And we're gonna decide, we're gonna arbitrate about this. We'll decide who the, the TV belongs to. And then when I get to the court, I'm like, "Hello, Mr. Judge." And then he, the judge looks up from his paper, and it's you wearing a mustache and glasses. How am I gonna assume that's gonna be even slightly fair? <coughs> because because you have to trust that the judge will obey the the minarchist constitution. But how would I trust that? Because uh, he's you. You are the judge, and I am arbitrating with you. He is way more. Um, he would. He would. You would trust him way more than in, than a, uh, Why would I? Uh, uh, than in an anchor. Yeah, yeah. So why would I trust him more? Why would I trust you to arbitrate a dispute that we have more than some other guy who we both agree to? Why would I trust you more? Let's say we're in the ANCAP system. Libertarian Doge is a judge. And we both agree to go to him to arbitrate. Why would that be mm -hmm. less trustworthy than you are the judge in your minarchist system and I still have a dispute with you? Why would I trust you more than the judge who is neutral? Because he, that judge in that society would be part of a company which provides um, core, um, services related to law that may, that may have uh, be may have political uh, leanings and moral leanings which in a, in a minarchist society would not be present. So your current argument is that a neutral judge would be less trustworthy than one of the people who were involved in the dispute being the judge. That is your current argument. No, I'm not saying that. That is all. exactly what you're saying. What I'm saying is that in a minarchist society, you would trust more a judge than in an ANCAP one. Okay, but I have a dispute with the state. I have a dispute with the minarchist state, and the minarchist state appoints all the judges. Well, only because the minarchist state appoints all the judges, it doesn't mean that you can't legally fight back through lawyers who do not agree with the statements of... Yeah, but the judge the has state. the say, the lawyers don't have the say. If the judge says, no, fuck off, your case is getting thrown out, what 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 good, what, what do I have? I can't go to a higher arbitrator because the state's the highest arbitrator. Yes, I totally agree with that. 
So oh, if yeah. you agree with that, I, then I, you agree I, with me that uh, your minarchist uh, courts wouldn't work. I'm, I'm, I've never said, I've never said that a minarchist society would be perfect. What no, I'm but it wouldn't even be slightly good, because you have this government which has a massive propensity to be corrupt, because nobody can possibly challenge them, because they get to do all the arbitrating. In theory, in theory, probably an AMCAP society would be way, would be less susceptible to corruption than an anarchist one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm so it's less susceptible say. to corruption, and your whole issue with AMCAP was corruption. So why aren't you an AMCAP? So let's go right back to the no. start, where you said that your no, problem with no, ANCAP was no. corruption. And you say ANCAP no. is less susceptible to corruption. So why aren't you an ANCAP? If corruption is your issue, why aren't you an ANCAP? I'm not an ANCAP because, as I said at the beginning of, of this debate, ANCAP is impossible to achieve. Yeah, because of corruption. Your issue is corruption. Because in an ANCAP society, there is no legal piece of paper that prevents companies from doing we have already, whatever they want. We have already gone over why anything. constitutions don't work. No. We have, no we have, we have so you not. think constitutions work now? Are we going to go right back to an hour ago when I proved no, that constitutions no. don't work? You didn't prove anything. Fucking, so we're going back to constitutions not working again. Okay, you so why do you think constitutions work? Already, do you think the U.S. constitution I, worked? I already, I already said that constitutions work if people are willing to follow it. So when the state says it's not willing to follow it and it gets to choose on who the arbitrators are, uh, what is the what? Is, why would it possibly follow it? Because yeah, in your minarchist state, minarchist it chooses all the state. judges. So it chooses all the people who interpret the constitution still. So why would you expect it to follow the constitution when it doesn't want to? It can just appoint judges who would say, yeah, no, when it says shall not be infringed, it didn't really mean that. It just meant regulated militias. It meant bump stock bans. It meant red flag laws. Why wouldn't you expect that to arise in a minarchist state? In a minarchist state, um, the constitution... Okay. In a minarchist state, the constitution would be based on the principle of individual freedom and libertarianism. So, like the any, U.S. Constitution, uh, if you didn't want to um, follow that constitution, as you said, you said earlier, what if I don't want to follow the constitution? No, what if the state what doesn't happens? want to follow it? What if the state gets bored with the constitution, if, and the, the state doesn't want to follow over it? That issue. If no, the we have not. Want to follow it, people may revolt. Yeah. People okay, right. Against this but this, but they didn't but do that in the U.S. Someone doesn't want to follow it. They if didn't do that in the U.S. Follow, and I already told you that uh, it, it, they didn't do it yet. But, <sighs> but okay, so how many years tradition. until they revolt? Do you think in this minarchist state? So the U. So your minarchist state, uh, the casual Walker minarchist state, they have just started violating the constitution. How many if years? People, a thousand if, years? If two thousand people, years? Six thousand years? How many years people, until people revolt? If the people are culturally aware of the importance of individual freedom... Yeah, so how would you ensure that? The, the government starts doing that. I can just say the exact same thing in ANCAP. I can just say, well, you know, if people don't want uh, aggression to happen, then they won't let it happen. So you, what you've done is you've just given me an argument as well. So what is your actual argument against ANCAP there? I'm saying that if in America state, you as an individual are against the principle of the minarchist state, against the constitution of the minarchist state, since the constitution of the minarchist state is based on libertarian principles, uh, you being against that constitution would mean that you are against libertarian principles. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not caring so, about uh, if an individual is against the Constitution, because that's of very little import here. I care about if the state is against the Constitution. I care about in your minarchist state, casual walkers minarchist state, I care about if you, the president, wants to violate the Constitution. Uh, how would I stop that? <laughs> it's, it's very simple. You would stop it uh, by basically... Uh, Taking your guns and make him. Stand Did that happen in the U.S.? Oh, again! You are you again? Are you really saying this again? We are not talking about historical events. 
we are but you are saying that it would happen in your principles you are saying that in your monarchist state you would expect people to revolt if the government started abusing power but that didn't happen in the u.s they would revolt if the culture of freedom was instilled in their minds so it has to be instilled in their minds how would you ensure that it's instilled in their minds well that's up to individuals and private companies. so you don't have a way to ensure that no because if the state wants great so we've gotten down to the point where you don't have a way to ensure that your system would be good where no we actually have a way we actually have a way so tell me but that way is not backed by the state the way by which people are constantly reminded of the importance importance of freedom is through uh, other individuals reminding them. Yeah, and you can do that in ANCAP. You can do that in ANCAP as well. Yeah, but in an ANCAP. Okay, guys, I I think you're you're going into circles. How about you either go on to another point or do your conclusions? It's up to you guys. Um, why don't we have anything else to say? If uh, Casual has anything else to say, I suppose he can bring it up. Well, I had I had one point where you guys might disagree. It was about it was a point that I've heard on a podcast. So, um, how would children ch- children ri- children's rights work? Sure, my opinion is basically the same as Nye's opinion. Ian Hersom, uh, he has a paper on it. I could link it in VC chat. Well, a uh, casual worker, do you think that a state should protect the rights of children? I, uh, sorry, I was not. Yeah, someone knocked at my door. Can you repeat the question? Do you believe that a state should protect the rights of children and therefore uh, put in place positive obligations for the parents, for example? Um, I, I would like to know what you mean by positive. Um, well, for example, uh, in a society, uh, some minarchists make the claim that in order to prevent a parent from starving their child, we should have a state that forces people to, for example, parents to feed their children. And that's a point that most minarchists make when they advocate for a state. Um, I would not. Um, again, um the uh, individual rights of of, um, of children will be the same individual rights of every same individual, and they will be okay. protected by the state uh, just as much as, you know, the, the violation of the NAP uh, regarding children will be the same as the violation of the NAP regarding any other individual, and the state would, would basically act in the same way. All right, so... Um... <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll just ask in, in the VC chat if people have questions and after that, well, you can make your, your, you guys, you can make a conclusion if you want to and then we'll, if you want to have a sort of uh, panel in which people ha- ask you questions because I believe there might be some misconceptions. Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, if someone wants to ask some to. questions, it's totally fine. So like um, my closing point would be that um, the premise of the debate was that ANCAP was infeasible because it would be corrupt and that you couldn't ensure the NEP would be protected. And I think I have shown that uh, that his state would be corrupt and it could also could not prevent the NEP from being violated. So on both those points, he has nothing to stand on. Okay, and do you want to do your conclusion, Casual Walker? Yeah, sure. Still... Um... I wanted to point out that um, I never claimed that in a minarchist state, the state would should, would not be susceptible to corruption. I never claimed that. I, I do recognize that the state is evil, even in a minarchist society. What I was saying that is that what I tried to uh, basically explain uh, during these almost two hours is that um, us a minarchist state, a minimal state, a state reduced to its core, is a necessary evil to prevent an uncapped society in which uh, corporations will be way more evil than the uh, minarchist state because they will not they will not have any uh, legal piece of paper which prevents them from oppressing people and breaking the NAP. So my whole argument is that. Uh, 
we need a minarchy state in order to preserve. All right, preserve all right. So uh, I'll start asking a couple of questions. So the first one is directed to you, Zulu. So it's from Rapid Shooter. The question is, how would you stop co uh, a company from becoming too powerful, stomping out competition in a totally free market? Uh, in a free market, uh, nobody stops anything from happening. It's uh, the invisible hand of Adam Smith who would step in and uh, he'd take care of things. Uh, I think I gave uh, Ewing's argument earlier. I can pull that up again. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically he's saying, um, let's say I somehow acquire 100% of the market share. What now? One, I price gouge because I control 100% of market X. Competition arises because people can do it for cheaper. My monopoly crumbles. And this began happening to Standard Oil even before antitrust laws were put in place. Or two, uh, every, time somewhere, every time someone tries to outcompete me, I lower my prices. And given that most firms operate with a 1% to 3% mar profit margin, doing this obviously is not feasible long term. And they would have to return, either return to competitive pricing, opening them back up to competition, or they'll go out of business, destroying the monopoly. All right. So uh, since, since there is mostly questions uh, for you, Zulu, because I believe most people here are uh, either classical liberals or minarchists. I'll keep asking you questions until one comes up for you, Walker. Uh, the second question would be made by Trinksty. Uh, a point casual work Walker made was that both a minarchist state and an NCAP state would violate the NAP, but the minarchist state would be the lesser of two evils, quote unquote. Do you accept his first claim that an NCAP society has a natural contradiction where the NAP is broken? Um, no, I don't. Uh, NCAP uh, never says that there will be no violations of the NAP. It's built on the premise that there will be conflict. And uh, it says that the best way to solve that conflict is through competing firms. You should let the free market handle it because um, I, bl I do not engage in special pleading where I think some industries uh, benefit from a monopoly. I think every industry benefits from competition. Okay, next, next question uh, from Niall. If militias are free to form... The... Okay, wait, let me reread that. If militias are free to form... If militias are free to form in the land of a monarchist state, uh, surely it almost guaranteed that some sort of insurrection will overthrow the state. So how would a minarchist state defend itself from private militias? Uh, that's direct, directed to you, Walker. Is he still here? Is he here? Wait, let me check. Uh, uh, casual Walker? Yeah, yeah, there's wait, a question sorry. for you. I, I, didn't, I completely didn't hear that question. Ah, yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll repeat it. Uh, if militias are free to form in the land of a minarchist state, surely it almost guaranteed that some sort of insurrection would overthrow the state. So how would a minarchist state defend itself from private militias? And I believe uh, I have to put it into context. Imagine, imagine if the minarchist state, on your own definition, didn't violate the NAP, and someone tried to violate it with a with a larger power, uh, monopoly on power, right? So how would it yes. defend itself? Um, first of all, um, yeah, I think that we, we go back to, to culture, to cultural issues, because I think that uh, in America, a state in which people are culturally aware of the importance of freedom and the non-violation of the NAP, uh, they will probably be uh, way more individuals or even militias uh, that um, actually side with the minarchist state if the if they realize that the militians trying to undermine the minarchist state want to violate the NAP. But if the militias who actually want to violate the NAP have valid arguments, um, uh, sorry, if the militias who actually want to overtake the uh, the minarchist state and the minarchist backed militias have actually valid arguments and um, on how much uh, the American state might get uh, tyrannical, then it would be totally fine because the most of the right. population would side with the militias. We'll, again, we'll, the militias we'll against the American we'll, state. We'll check it next time. So I have another question for you, Zulu. Uh, how would uh, an NCAP society try to stop po poaching and hunting endangered animals? So I'll just answer in terms of economics. When you flood a market with a certain commodity, you're going to uh, severely uh, drive down the prices. And that's something that's being done in, in South Africa, for example, where people are making artificial uh, uh, whatever sort of uh, rhino commodity horns, that you can extract from. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, rhino horns, exactly. 
they make artificial sorts of uh, rhino, uh, rhino hordes, which have the same sort of uh, uh, use and use to the consumer. So when you produce a lot of them and you, you flood the market with them, the price uh, is driven down. But and, if you have anything else to say. And even for like, um, if the like, people want the authentic thing, for example, um, South Africa did this for a while where they allowed uh, farmers to farm rhinos and the rhino population went through this roof, like it, I think it quadrupled or something like that, because suddenly people were allowed to own rhinos and take their horns because they legalized the sale of rhino horn, was what they did. So farmers were incentivized to farm these rhinos, put them to sleep, saw the horn off, and sell the horn. And then, you know, mm -hmm. the, so even for goods that you couldn't make synthetic, or if like the customer really doesn't want synthetic, then you can still do it through farming. Mm -hmm. Uh, another question for you. What are your thoughts on Nozick's theory that in an uncapped society, a dominant DPA would rise and eventually make a tight state to fill the power vacuum? Um, well, I, 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 think I've gone, I think I'm slightly aware of Nozick's argument there. Uh, it's basically like, um, I, think it's, I don't think there is a power vacuum in an uncapped system. I think the power is filled by competing firms. It's like saying that um, in the uh, food industry, you would expect somebody to fill the power vacuum left by the Soviet Union because there isn't a single entity producing all the food anymore. I think it's special pleading to say that rights enforcement is in any way different than any other industry economically. Hmm, okay. Uh, to casual work walker, in a minarchist state, what would justify taxation? If we go on the principle that taxation is tapped and therefore breaks the NAP. What would justify taxation is the awareness that if um, there was no taxation um, to found a, a publicly held uh, estate backed militia, the NAP would be violated. So if yeah, but that's that's more want... of, that's more of a matter of utilitarianism. So what you're saying is that if we don't have such things, the consequences would be worse than in case uh, B. But my question to you is more in terms of deontology, how are you justifying taxation in a system in which taxation is tapped? Um, as I, again, as I said, um, it would be explained to people that taxation is tapped regarding all the uh, matters which do not um, uh, which do not apply to uh, the minarchist state and the minarchist uh, defense of the NAP. So it's actually a matter of choosing uh, um, over no taxation at all and thus having uh, a chaos and anarchy or a minimal taxation which actually um, enforces, uh, which actually makes sure that the NAP is respected because there would be um, publicly held militias that ensure um, that you know the NAP is not infringed so it's, it would be like a choice by people all right uh, in, in, in terms of, in terms of semantics I'll let you slide for this one but uh, I'm inclined to debate this with you uh, a bit later but I have another question for you there uh, and I had the same question when you said that you said earlier that election wouldn't take place in a minarchist society. So how would a government form where do they get their legitimacy from if there is no such things as elections? Um, I don't I, I honestly don't get the question. Well, uh, uh, dur during the time you were talking about how uh, yeah. the Italian government uh, mm -hmm. works its legislation and and whatnot, you brought the, the fact that societies in a minarchist sort of state wouldn't be elected, they would just be present. So my question to yeah. you is, well, if you say that there's no election, how do we know that a state is legitimate? Are you talking in terms of uh, the Hope's approach to it, in which he says that since democracies aren't as good, a monarchy would be better, but he, he isn't quite making the case for a monarchy either. But is that is that what you're going on? Um, I would agree with that to a certain extent because people who are not, uh, as you know, as Hopper pointed, people who are um, not elected um, actually have a long-term uh, vision for, uh, um, you know, for the state and actually wants to make, uh, actually wants to make the nation, the community prosper compared to people who are 
who are, who are actually elected and just want to be re-elected, therefore are harming state. Yeah, I would, I would use, I would use Hopian to justify that. Okay, I think I have uh, one last question there, uh, and that would be for Zulu. And then after this, I, I think we can end this debate. Uh, and this is not, it, it's a question that also interests me. It's in an honor, in an article capitalist society, what stops separate local militias of fascism or communism forming and slowly overtaking the society? And I'll add uh, to this question if, if we assume that such could arise, do you believe in? in physical removal and ostracizing. Yeah, so uh, basically uh, the way that you would hope to mitigate that sort of risk would be through covenant communities. So you'd have a community of people who are all, they're all libertarians, they love being libertarians, libertarianism, they live, they eat, breathe, sleep libertarianism. Uh, you wouldn't really expect fascism to get a whole big wave there. Uh, and, you know, if you have a covenant which is fascist, you wouldn't expect it to spread very far because uh, it would be far less efficient it would be outcompeted by other covenants and also a good way to do this is which i quite like for e enacting anarcho-capitalism within our lifetime would be through seasteading because seasteads are um by their nature voluntary right you can't say hey you uh, section of the seastead you can't detach from us and go form somewhere else uh, there it would be like, oh, fucking come and stop me then. They'll detach and they'll be far faster because the larger a boat is, the slower it is. Like, it's like mitosis, in a way. All right, so I think we can conclude this debate. I think you guys did a good job at presenting your points, even though on, on some aspects, for example, uh, the ju judicial system, we kind of went into circles. I think you guys did a, an okay job. So if you have anything else to add, uh, I think you can you can end this debate right there. I will, I would if I can just add one last argument and what just just came up to my mind. And well, if, can... if 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 we don't go on to another twenty minute no, no, no. you can state your point. No, I would just argue uh, regarding the matter of, of you know the justification of taxation um, in order to uh, found a publicly held militia. I would say that that is one of the ways by which a minarchist society could run them. But another one, which I'm totally fine with, would be um, voluntary uh, founding of that pub public militia. Because uh, Liquid Zulu would argue that that the same that is the same of um, an ANCAP society, uh, but um, only be I would counter argue that by saying that only because something. It is voluntary. It doesn't mean, and it's not enforced by force uh, by the state. It doesn't mean that it can be state-run. So All that right. was just like a little side note. Well, thank you guys for coming to the debate, and I, I truly appreciate it because uh, uh, infighting between libertarians are something that happened quite a lot, and this is also something which I disagree a bit with Zulu there, but. Uh, yeah, you guys did a good job at this, and I, I will now let people talk and, and the yep. VC however they want to talk. Yeah, I'd like to thank everyone for coming along, and thank you for hosting. Have a good day, guys. Peace. Yeah.